Listen, there are some of you that because of your past life, you know there are certain things and certain places and certain people you can't go around. Come on and help me while I preach to you. There are certain dangerous places, dangerous situations, and you're, you already know your vulnerabilities. Honey, if you know that that job, if you know that computer, if you know that conversation, that friendship, that restaurant, that crowd, if those places and things are not right for you, get away from it. If you've struggled with meth addiction, crack addiction, don't go get a job with a bunch of other crack addicts. Get those numbers out of your phone and quit associating with a bunch of other drug addicts. Now there may come a time that you can sit in the window seal because God has grown you. You've matured and you can now handle it. But there are people that are weak and vulnerable. If you were an alcoholic, you don't need to go to the bar after work and sit on the stool and order a Coke because tomorrow you might be out ordering a Jack Daniels and a, and a Coke. Come on now, say amen to me. Am I preaching all right? The truth is, is that if you don't completely get away from it, it's bound to pull you back. And there are some people that they'll sit in the windowsill. They feel the pull. They know they've always had a problem with lust. And so, but when they feel the pull, they don't get away from the window. They stay there. And then they cry moan and get sad about the fact that their marriage falls apart because of the th- the thing they brought on their life. One man that I counseled with uh, several years ago, he lost his whole family. And today, his kids are calling another man daddy. You know why? Because he could not realize, uh, even though we worked on it and worked on it, uh, you got to get out of the window of your vulnerabilities. Come on and say amen to me, somebody. Someone else. I want you to see what I'm saying clearly. Someone else might have been able to sit in that window and they would have never had a single problem. Really? What is that to say, Pastor? That is to say there are some places that maybe I can go that you can't. There are certain things I might can engage in and you can't. Here's where the problem comes in. Because you had a problem with gambling. Oh, this is about to get thick right here. Because before you got saved, you liked to play poker. You bet money and you lost everything you had. And now you can't, You feel the conviction. You can't even pick up a deck of Uno cards. You're going to go to the church and push your conviction off on everybody else. Well, you can't play Uno because I can't play Uno. And you know God wouldn't do that. I just want you to understand. Somebody say personal conviction. There are some things that are personal convictions. And can you prove that to us? I sure can. Are you ready? Hold on to your seatbelt, baby. Because it's about to get real. Do you remember that man who was rich and he came to Jesus and he said, I've, I've given tithes and I've given offer and I've done all these things. I've been a good boy all my life. Jesus, what more must I do to, to be saved? What more? I mean, I think the fellow thought he had it all going together and Jesus saw something. Jesus put him through his MRI machine and saw something that in he he didn't even see in himself. You know what Jesus told him? He said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And you know what the man did? He held his head down and walked away sorrowful. Has Jesus ever told anybody else in the Word to go sell everything you had and get it to the poor? It was a personal thing. That man had a problem and God addressed that problem. Listen, if you've got vulnerabilities, don't sit in the window of temptation of the things you know you've got a problem with.